so Angela, we've talked about challenging behavior. Yes. What actually is challenging behavior? Well, challenging behavior is trying to uh, re trying to achieve acceptable goals in an unacceptable manner. Mm. So if you um, don't like being in class, mm -hmm. you don't like what's going on in class, you just kick up a fuss and throw things and uh, run out of the room um, because you don't like being there. And you don't know how to say, I feel unhappy and I don't like being here and I don't understand what you're saying and I don't understand what you want me to do. Mm. And it makes me really anxious. So I'm going to just yeah. throw those books and go out of the door. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's an unacceptable means mm. of reaching an acceptable goal, which would be to say, excuse me, I don't really understand what you said. Mm -hmm. Could you explain it again, please? Yes. And that is a skill that you have to learn if you're someone who has um, neurodiversity mm -hmm. difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, children with dyslexia often have yes. challenging behavior. Yes. Um, there's a phrase that surrounds dyslexia, if I can't write, I'll fight. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and obviously people on the autistic spectrum too have mm. um, high levels of anxiety as well. And if they're given stuff they don't like, don't understand, don't want to do, feel threatened by for some reason, mm -hmm. they will f go into fight or flight or freeze, just won't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. So what really helps us there is understanding how the brain works. Mm -hmm. And I, um, when I'm talking to people, I say, you know, we can make a brain with our fist because yes. we have the neocortex, which is underneath our skull. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, the cerebellum and the nervous spinal cord, the nervous system. And underneath that bit, the neocortex, the crinkly bit, mm -hmm. there's the emotional brain mm -hmm. uh, and it's called the limbic system. And mm -hmm. inside it is a little almond shaped thing called the amygdala. And everything we receive, we receive through our emotional brain first. Mm -hmm. So there isn't anything that we react to that doesn't have an emotional response. Fortunately, we've got connections from our emotions to our reason, mm. and that's what makes us human. So we can rationalize any emotion that's coming in most of the time, unless mm. it's for you as an individual, a frightening, anxious making event. Yeah. Um, so we know that people on the autistic spectrum and other neurodiverse people, ADD, ADHD, pathological demand avoidance syndrome, all those things, all those people's brains have an emotional response to what's going on in their world around them. Mm -hmm. And that emotional response will be very high. Their amygdala, the little almond thing, gets highly activated mm -hmm. and the, it changes your body chemistry. So you immediately start pumping out, your body starts pumping out high levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone. Mm. And then if the, if the situation becomes really frightening, you will go into your um, cerebellum and into your fight, flight, freeze reflex, because what your brain is feeling is it has to do those things to save itself. That's right, survival instinct. Yeah. Survival instinct, exactly. Mm. So, we, we know this is related mm. to challenging behavior. Mm. Challenging behavior is coming from that part of our brain. So one of the things that we have to do in, in well, what we did in our school was to teach how to calm down, teach what that word, that sound that comes out of your mouth that says calm means, because people can go, calm down, calm down, and all that. Mm. But if you're in there, and you don't understand what this word means to you physically, how could you do it? Mm. And I remember teaching some children relaxation and they, they, had, they were lying on the floor and they, they were like this, they stiff. were stiff. <laughs> and when I said relax, they didn't know what I meant. Yes, and yes. so I knew that I had to it. teach them yeah. what it 
felt like to be tense and let go, be tense and let go, and then say, and then when you let go, you're relaxing. And then over time, we would have relaxation lessons mm -hmm. and then teach them about breathing. Yeah. And we, in the school, we built this into the curriculum. Every day after lunch, there was relaxation. Oh, yeah, good. Because no, in any school you like to mention, there will always be something that happens in the playground that upsets somebody. Mm -hmm. So we knew after lunch they'd come in, they'd be hyper about something or upset about something. So we'd immediately have the relaxation class. The whole school would be so quiet <laughs> for 20 minutes after lunch. Mm -hmm. And it was just wonderful. We offered them hand and feet massage if mm -hmm. they wanted it. Um, and we would use, if they wanted it and they weren't allergic to it, lavender or chamomile mm -hmm. in uh, a carrier oil if they wanted it. But mostly they just would like to lie on their yoga mat and <laughs> relax. Mm. And that made a huge difference to what happened in the afternoon. Challenging mm. behavior mm. just went down and down and down. Sounds like something that should be ruled out into businesses. I would have thought after lunch it should, be, <laughs> should become statutory that people have to have a half hour or whatever to relax, well, calm down, yes. and then get back afterwards. I think we all need to learn. Mm. I think it needs to be in the national curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps, as you say, in businesses, anywhere where people gather together and there's a, a, a likelihood of anxiety to go up mm -hmm. and stress to be increased. I remember we had a man come round from the Institute of Education and he said, what you're doing in this school should happen in every school in the country. Mm. And I do think yeah. it's a life skill. Yes, it is. Being able to relax is a life skill. Yes. So we also did have specific behaviour management programmes for every child. So we'd identify what it was that they were doing that isn't working for them. We never used the word bad, wrong, naughty. Yeah. They were banned words. Yeah. Um, either things worked or didn't work. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that was the language we used. Good. <laughs>